Hello everyone. It's a great day to learn something new. So let's get started. So before starting the actual topic, let's imagine a scenario. So in this there are a bunch of people who want to build a building. So they go and start working towards it. They don't actually know what they are supposed to do, but they try to do small works themselves and uh, one month passes like this. But they realize that they are nowhere close. They have just um, some people have stacked some bricks somewhere or there uh, there is a bunch of cement lying somewhere but they haven't got uh, gotten anywhere. So then uh, they they think what is wrong? Then one day a manager comes in and he instructs every person to do specific work. Then they start doing the work assigned to them and they realize that the same one month which they had spent earlier doing nothing, now they have built two stories of uh, the building. So um guess who the manager of our body is it's the nervous system so first is the central nervous system consisting of two parts the brain and the spinal cord the brain has the divisions of cerebrum cerebellum diencephalon and the brain stem brain stem consisting of the midbrain pons and medulla next is the spinal cord consisting of cervical thoracic lumbar and the sacral segments this this was all about the central nervous system now the peripheral nervous system it consists of the somatic and the autonomic nervous system the somatic system carries cranial nerves that are 12 pairs and spinal nerves that are 31 pairs and the autonomic system is divided into sympathetic and the parasympathetic system the nervous system consists of two main parts the first one is the central nervous system and the second is the peripheral nervous system the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system consists of somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system the brain consists of various parts that help in its coordinated function so the first is the cerebrum the cerebrum consists of two hemispheres and four lobes the four lobes are frontal parietal temporal and the occipital now the functions of each lobe first is the frontal lobe that is responsible for reasoning and thought the parietal lobe that is responsible for integrating sensory information here is his senses perceived a stimulus and it acted upon it so that was his parietal lobe acting next is the temporal lobe that is responsible for auditory signals hello sitaram so that was his temporal lobe acting next is the occipital lobe that that is responsible for visual signals Next is the diencephalon. So it consists of two parts, the thalamus and the hypothalamus. The thalamus is responsible for relaying sensory information to the cerebrum, whereas the hypothalamus controls various functions such as blood vessel constriction, sleep, appetite. It plays a role in emotions as well as a very important role in the hormonal control of the body. Last is the brain stem. The brain stem consists of three parts. First is the mid brain. the pons and the medulla so the midbrain is responsible for certain eye and auditory reflexes the pons is responsible for certain reflexes such as chewing tasting and saliva production lastly the medulla which is the upward elongation of the spinal cord is responsible for functions such as blood pressure regulation heart rate regulation and digestion etc coming to the peripheral nervous system It consists of 31 pairs of spinal nerves and 12 pairs of cranial nerves. But what does the peripheral nervous system do? It carries sensory as well as motor information. But how does it do that? The sensory information is carried upwards from the sense organs towards the peripheral nervous system, whereas the motor information is carried downwards from the peripheral nervous system to the effector organs. the sensory nerves also called as the afferent fibers carry information of touch pain temperature pressure and the special senses which includes hearing sight smell and taste all these sensations are carried upwards from the sense organs towards the peripheral nervous system the motor nerves the motor nerves are also called as the efferent fibers It consists of two parts the voluntary or the somatic system and the involuntary or the autonomic nervous system the uh, the somatic nervous system the actions of the somatic nervous system are brought about by the skeletal muscles here is an example of the biceps muscle 
The involuntary action is brought about by two groups of muscles. The first one is the smooth muscle which is present in our internal organs like the stomach and the cardiac muscle present in the heart. Now coming to the autonomic nervous system. It consists of two parts, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system gets activated in situations of fright and flight. <laughs> So that was my sympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system. It it works in bringing the body back to normal after the, after an sympathetic activity. So that is the function of the parasympathetic system. It it is also active in uh, situations of sleep and meditation. So that was the video on the overview of the nervous system. I hope you liked it. Bye for now. See you in the next video.